Hey, professors. So unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen all the news articles surrounding Luna and your company BlockBerry Creative recently. BlockBerry Creative went from one of the most respected companies in the industry to one that's making headline after headline over there in Hong Kong. Hey, professors. So unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen all the news articles surrounding Luna and your company BlockBerry Creative recently. Blockberry Creative went from one of the most respected companies in the industry to one that's making headline after headline over there in Hong Kong. It's mind-blowing how much BlockBerry Creative is overworking too without paying her any real money. So, for some quick context, Luna is a 12-member girl group that debuted in 2018 and has since gained widespread global popularity. Now, for the longest time, much of this success has been credited to their company, Blockberry Creative, with many fans even considering them one of the best agencies in the K-pop industry. Not only were they praised for creating Luna's groundbreaking concept and pre-debut strategy, they also had a rich parent company who could supposedly fund all the group's experiments projects and high-budget comebacks. Or so fans thought. Within the span of just the past few weeks, this once beloved company has now been exposed for owing millions in unpaid wages and taxes, defaulting on numerous loans, getting into legal disputes with almost all its Luna members, and is currently facing a widespread boycott from Luna's global fan base. This shocking turn of events has left many people scratching their heads and wondering just where and when did things go so wrong? Well, today we will finally be taking a closer look at all the events that may have led up to Blockberry's tragic downfall, which in my opinion was actually years in the making. But before we jump in, I wanted to thank our sponsor Debug Box for making this video possible. The Debug Box is a seasonal subscription box that brings a taste of Korea straight to your doorstep with a curated selection of Korean lifestyle items. So I actually have my very own Debug Box here with me today, and guys, isn't it just so pretty? But yeah, let's open it up together and take a look at what's inside. As you can see, the Debak box is packed to the brim with authentic items from Korea, ranging from beauty. I've been running out of moisturizer, so this is perfect. And it looks like a full tub as well, like a full size tub to food. And with an overall rating of 4.9 stars, it seems like other customers so far have enjoyed this box just as much as I did. Is this a back scratcher? Oh my gosh, <laughs> my grandfather used to have one of these. So be sure to check out Debug Box using the link in the description, and don't forget to use code PLUBY05 for 5% off. Huge thanks to Debug for sponsoring this video, and without further ado, let's jump right into today's story. Okay, so Blockberry Creative's problems actually start all the way back with their parent company, Ilkwang Group. Ilkwang Group is one of Korea's biggest arms dealers and a supposedly very rich company, though the exact net worth has never been confirmed. Now, the ethics of supporting the arms industry aside, Luna's fans generally celebrated their ties to Ilkwang, believing Ilkwang's wealth could help fund Luna's debut and promotional activities. But was being under Ilkwang really the blessing everyone believed, or was it in fact more of a curse? Okay, so a brief summary on Ilkwang Group. Their conglomerate who, as I mentioned earlier, started off in the arms dealings business, but eventually also expanded into the education, elderly care, tech, and entertainment industries. The company's CEO and founder is Yi Kyu-tae, a former police officer who ironically racked up a pretty extensive criminal record thanks to him and his family's illicit business dealings. In 2004, Yi Kyu-tae and his oldest son Yi jong myung began regularly evading taxes related to their elderly care subsidiary, with the pair reportedly owing close to 50 billion won in total. Until today, you can still see them being listed on South Korea's national tax tax service database as being quote, high income tax evaders. Then in 2009, Yi was given a four year suspended sentence for corruption because he had accepted bribes from Turkish defense manufacturers in exchange for securing 
them a deal with the Korean Air Force. The father-son duo then got in trouble again in 2015 when they were investigated for sexually harassing an actress under their entertainment subsidiary Polaris Entertainment. The actress, who is named Clara, attempted to file a lawsuit against the company but was instead threatened using the Yi family's connections to the police, CIA, and gangs. Unsurprisingly, she ended up withdrawing her lawsuit and the Yi family mysteriously avoided all charges. This was followed by yet another brush with the law in 2016 when Yi Kyu-tae was finally sentenced to three years in prison, this time for bribing government officials and embezzling company assets. 네, 정부 합동 수사단은 이 회장의 신병이 확보된 만큼 로비 의혹 전반을 수사할 방침입니다. It was said that in the months leading up to his arrest, huge investigations were launched against Il Kwang Group and all its subsidiaries, causing the artists under Polaris Entertainment to have to halt all their activities as their label faced constant police raids and shutdowns. And it was amongst all this chaos that Blockberry Creative was formed. <laughs> The label was formed in March of 2016 as a subsidiary under Polaris Entertainment, with their CEO being none other than the son, Yi Jung Myung. Unsurprisingly, Mr. Yi carried Il Kwang's shady business practices over with him to Blockberry, though strangely, he did not seem to bring along much of Il Kwang's wealth or assets, with him reportedly having to take out various loans just to subsidize Blockberry's initial startup costs. With such terrible corporate history and bad leadership, I think it's an understatement to say that Blockberry Creative started off on the wrong foot right from the beginning. And unfortunately, things were only about to get worse from here with the formation of their first K-pop group, Luna. Luna was first introduced to the public in October of 2016, and they immediately made headlines when it was announced that they would be embarking on an ambitious pre-debut project that would far surpass anything that had been done in the K-pop industry before. The project, which was set to last for two years, involved each of the 12 members debuting with their own solo songs and albums, followed by various subunit and group releases. And these all came with really high-budget music videos, many of which which were filmed overseas in Europe and America. Additionally, it was also revealed that Blockberry Creative had teamed up with renowned K-pop director Jaden Jong to come up with a groundbreaking concept for Luna. The concept, which had apparently taken Jaden years to develop, involved a complex storyline about the members living in a multi-dimensional universe called the Lunaverse, and was to be unveiled through a series of abstract symbolisms in each of the group's music videos. This explained why a lot of thoughts seem to have gone into every single release, with each of the members and subunits having different visuals and aesthetics that corresponded to their respective roles in the storyline. All of this really impressed viewers and helped Luna stand out from the crowd, allowing them to become one of the most popular rookie groups by the time they debuted in 2018. At the same time, Blockberry was also credited as being one of the most innovative companies in the industry, with netizens singing praises such as, Wow, Blockberry Creative is such a pioneer. No other company has done it like Blockberry Creative before. And indeed, no other company had quite done it like Blockberry Creative before. But perhaps everyone should have stopped for a moment and thought about why that was. And well, the answer was because it costed an astronomical 10 billion won. Nani? Initially, the company actually seemed really proud of this, boasting to news outlets that quote, they might have spent even more depending on calculations. And overall, it just really seemed like Blockberry was relishing in their rich, unconventional, almost Elon Musk-like image. But was throwing upwards of 10 billion won on a K-pop debut really something to brag about? To put things in perspective, companies typically only spend around 1 to 2 billion won on a K-pop debut, and even so, most artists would still struggle to recoup this cost, with even top groups like BTS and G-Friend taking at least 2 years to break even. So the fact that Blockberry had spent over 5 times the normal amount on Luna and ever expected them to generate a profit was unrealistic to say the least. Essentially, Blockberry's reckless spend 
ending meant that Luna were pretty much set on a path to becoming a loss-making business from the start. And the worst part is, because BlockBerry didn't even have the money to fund this exorbitant project, much of the 10 billion won actually had to be borrowed from various companies across the world, kickstarting what would be the company's continuous financial troubles and legal disputes with their creditors. Initially, BlockBerry did a pretty good job hiding their financial problems, to the point where nobody seemed to notice when the first red flag surfaced in 2019, just one year after Luna's debut, when the creator behind the Lunaverse, Jaden Jong, had a falling out with BlockBerry Creative. The disagreement apparently stemmed from BlockBerry's decision to cut back on the importance of the Lunaverse, and though the reasons behind this decision have never been confirmed, it is now widely believed that the company company must have done this due to their tight finances. After all, Jaden was known for sparing no expenses when it came to his vision for the Lunaverse, with it being confirmed that he actually had an expensive 45-part comeback project in the works for the group. Which, to be honest, I can't think of any K-pop company who would fund that. Except maybe SM. SM funds some weird-ass stuff. <laughs> Now, considering what we now know about BlockBerry Creative's financial situation, it really is not a stretch to assume that the company simply couldn't continue funding such an expensive and unprofitable project, which was likely what led to their split with Jaden. And so, just like that, the Lunaverse, which had taken years to develop and costed the company over 10 billion won to flesh out, was essentially thrown down the drain after just one comeback, with the group instead taking on a more mainstream girl crush approach. Thankfully, this didn't seem to affect Luna much, with the group continuing to maintain their success even after their concept change. However, BlockBerry's financial troubles were still far from over, and despite cutting costs associated with the Lunaverse, they were still hemorrhaging money thanks to their reckless spending. They continued to clothe their members in luxury fashion items, provided them with individual studio rooms, and even upgraded their accommodation, giving each of them individual apartments. <laughs> 저희가 이제 좀 조사를 해본 바로는 네. 멤버들이 이제 한 집에 살다가 네. 독립을 했는데 그 집들이 한 건물에 있다는 네. 게 네. 맞는 거예요. 네. 대박! all the whiles continuously failing to repay their numerous loans. It was clear that BlockBerry was desperate to maintain their luxurious facade and continue portraying the image of a successful company, possibly to attract more unknowing investors. However, they obviously couldn't just avoid their problems forever. And sure enough, it wasn't long before their looming debts would finally begin to catch up with them. In late 2019, BlockBerry Creative was sued for the first time by IT company Donuts after they failed to fully repay a loan from 2017. As a result, BlockBerry was ordered to compensate the company with 360 million won. The same company then sued BlockBerry again in February of 2022, this time for violating a 3.5 billion won investment contract. As a result, BlockBerry were ordered to pay back this massive investment in full setting them back another 3.5 billion won. As if all of this wasn't bad enough, choreographers, stylists, and other members of staff also came knocking on BlockBerry's door, demanding their overdue wages. It all started when Luna's choreographer Kim Hwa Young publicly called out BlockBerry on Instagram, accusing the company of continuously delaying her pay. News articles then surfaced that BlockBerry had actually been doing the same thing to many of their staff for months before ultimately ordering them to just halt all work recently. The company's actions had allegedly resulted in many of these staff suffering from personal financial hardships, and all in all, it was said that the amount owed in employee wages, insurance, and other company expenses totaled to well over a few hundred million won. 
With so many lawsuits and exposés popping up, the rich image Blockberry had tried so hard to cultivate was finally beginning to crumble, and people were slowly becoming aware of their dire financial situation. However, because the Luna members still seemed to be living extravagant lifestyles, many fans continued supporting Blockberry, starting the hashtag SaveLuna to help raise funds for the company, and praising them for quote, prioritizing the members' well-being despite their debt. Blockberry might be broke, but I love how they're still treating our girls like the queens they are, one person said. Because who cares if the staff aren't paid or if the investors were scammed, as long as the members are being treated well, right? Except this too turned out to be a huge lie. Because beneath their luxurious accommodation and clothing, it turns out the members were also being exploited just as much as everyone else. I am shocked! Shocked! Well, not that shocked. Luna's plight would first be brought to public attention in March of 2022, when it was reported that the group's most popular member, Chu, had filed a lawsuit against Blockberry Creative to suspend her contract. At the time, there was already some speculation that Chu might have been mistreated by her company, such as this blog post that was written by Chu's fansite master, where it alleged that she was not provided with a manager or proper transport, and often had to carry her own luggage around after her schedules. However, nothing was really confirmed and Blockberry remained tight-lipped on the issue, even going as far as to deny that any legal disputes ever took place. Regardless, Chu began mysteriously missing out on numerous group schedules due to supposed health issues. Meanwhile, the rest of the Luna members were being worked to the bone, likely because Blockberry was desperately in need of some quick cash at this point. In fact, within just the span of mid-2022 alone, Luna released a Korean comeback, a Japanese comeback, participated in Queendom, and on top of all of that, they also embarked on their first world tour titled Luna the World, where they would be touring 19 cities in the span of two months. Needless to say, by this point, the members were absolutely exhausted, and the tour unsurprisingly became plagued with numerous health issues and accidents. Hassel, for instance, was unable to participate in choreography due to a shoulder injury. Yojin fainted on stage in Mexico City and had to miss the Atlanta concert Kim due to and body. Jinsoul were absent from the meet and greet in Charlie Chicago couldn't because participate they were feeling in unwell. Almost half the concerts due to experienced cold. breathing Olivia issues in Mexico missed City. Three concerts due to a hip injury. I mean, I could go on and on, but suffice to say, the tour was nothing short of a disaster, with over half the members having to sit out of various parts of the tour due to illness or injury. It was clear that the group was not in the state to perform, and even the fans who had been looking forward to the tour began requesting for it to be postponed so that the members could take a well-deserved break. However, Blockberry Creative pushed ahead with the tour anyways, even squeezing in an additional performance at KCON LA. The incident caused Blockberry Creative to receive some backlash from fans, with many raising concerns about the group's bad working conditions. And these concerns would only further escalate when member Yojin made the shocking revelation that she hadn't been paid at all throughout her six years with Luna. However, it wasn't until November 24th that all the issues surrounding Luna really blew up when Blockberry made the sudden announcement that Chu, the member who if you recall had been missing on and off since February, had apparently been kicked out of the group due to an abuse of power. According to Blockberry's statement, Chu was supposedly fired because she used violent language against a staff member, and the company was now in the process of apologizing and comforting their staff because they supposedly respected their staff so much and wanted to quote, give back for their staff's sacrifices and devotion. Never mind the fact that these were the very same staff the company still owed months of wages to. <laughs> to say, this statement was met with a ton of skepticism, especially since Chu had always been known for her cheerful and bright personality. Fans immediately rallied around the idol, trending the hashtag justice for Chu, and many industry insiders also came forward in her defense, testifying that they had great experiences working with her on set. 
But perhaps the biggest show of support came from the Luna members themselves, because on the 29th of November, so just four days after Chu's expulsion, nine out of the 11 remaining members also filed injunctions to suspend their contracts with Blockberry Creative, citing a lack of trust for their company. Then finally, on the 19th of December, Dispatch came forward with the receipts, finally revealing what exactly went down between Chu and Blockberry behind the scenes. It turns out that for years, Chu was in fact the victim of an exploitative contract under the company. The Dispatch article revealed that in 2017, Chu was coerced into signing a contract that stated she would be responsible for half her expenses while only receiving 30% of her pay. Now, to put into perspective how bad this is, it means that Chu could potentially be losing money even when doing profitable activities. For example, if the revenue was $100 and the cost was $70, based on this contract, Blockberry would be gaining $35 while Chu would be losing $5. This could explain why Chu allegedly didn't earn any money throughout the whole of 2021 despite being one of the busiest idols that year. And things got so bad that she allegedly didn't even have enough money to buy regular meals for herself, resulting in her developing binge eating disorder. <laughs> Finally, in early 2022, Chu had had enough, and so she successfully filed a lawsuit against her company to have her contract terminated. Blockberry was not ready to let go of their main moneymaker though, and so they renegotiated a contract with her in April of 2022, which promised her a better revenue split amongst many other benefits. However, it seems by this point, Chu had already lost trust in her company, which resulted in her being snappy and demanding towards company staff. Chad Long revealed that she had indeed refused to stay for group activities and had even insulted staff with words like pathetic and incompetent. Now of course, I'd just like to remind everyone that these staff were technically also victims of Blockberry Creative, since they too were overworked and not getting paid. So they definitely did not deserve to be the target of Chu's anger. However, most people could also understand why anyone in Chu's position would be frustrated, especially considering everything she had been through. And and honestly, her rudeness was nothing compared to Blockberry's years of exploitation and shady business practices. So this article really didn't do anything for Blockberry's reputation. And if anything, it just caused their image to tank to an all-time low. With the company now facing widespread criticism, lawsuits from 9 of the Luna members, and millions of dollars of unresolved debts, they clearly had a lot of issues they had to deal with ASAP. Yet, despite it all, Blockberry continued to ignore all criticisms and went on with business as usual, even announcing that Luna would be making a comeback in January of 2023. Perhaps Blockberry thought that this comeback could distract from the ongoing controversies, but Luna's fans really weren't that gullible, and many of them were totally against the idea of another comeback, especially since it was now clear that firstly, the members weren't getting paid, and second, Secondly, they clearly wanted out of the company. And so, Luna's fans banded together and did something that I can only describe as legendary. They organized one of the most successful global boycotts ever seen in K-pop. On the 5th of December, Luna's fandom released an official post demanding explanations from Blockberry regarding their mistreatment of Luna. The post stated that Blockberry had two days to respond or would risk a boycott from the entire fandom. However, Blockberry did not take this threat seriously and failed to provide a response. So just as promised, as soon as the 8th of December began, the boycott commenced. And let's just say Luna's fans were absolutely savage. Overnight, the company lost almost all their revenue streams with fans mass unfollowing the company's Instagram page, stopping purchases of all Luna merchandise, and ignoring all promotions regarding their upcoming album. In fact, on the 14th of December, it was reported that Luna only received a dismal 93 pre-orders for their upcoming album, which is a 98% drop from their usual pre-order sales. And the group's comeback teaser also flopped, getting hit with a miserable 74% dislike ratio. Yikes. Finally realizing just how serious the boycott was, Blockberry announced on the 22nd of December that they would be indefinitely postponing the comeback. To be honest though, they might as well have just cancelled the comeback altogether, because since then, 
things really haven't gotten any better for the company, with four more Luna members recently winning lawsuits against them. Additionally, Blockberry seems to have also halted some of their other projects. This includes a girl group called BBs who was originally supposed to debut in 2022, as well as a male version of Luna, which thank god that has been put on hold. I guess all we can hope for now is that all the remaining artists, trainees, and staff will all be able to escape the sinking ship of a company as soon as possible and continue their careers in a better agency. But yeah, that seems to be where the story ends for now. As you can see, Blockberry Creative's current predicament is in fact an amalgamation of countless mistakes and bad decisions dating back to before the company was even formed. From their CEO's shady past, to their mounting debts, to the mistreatment of their artists, Blockberry's problems run deep, and I don't know if they'll ever be able to bounce back from the mess they've gotten themselves in. But of course, these are just my opinions and I'm curious to know what you guys think. Do you think Blockberry will ever be able to recover from their scandals? And what do you think is going to happen to Luna? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And with that said, I'll see you guys soon. Bye!